Well, winter is still here, but I woke up one morning and thought it was time to pull together all of my tasks and experiments while getting my seeds started. You may have laughed at my hand-drawn layout for the next growing season, but I have come back to it time after time to keep me organized, even if I won't win a drawing contest. It makes sense for me. Last season, I embraced chaos, and it worked to a point. But I later learned that I had placed some things together that should not have been neighbors, like my lovely basil with cucumbers, because they make cucumbers taste basily while competing for water, and the basil won. So I made lists of what works well with what. This way, I could still have chaos, but ordered chaos. These lists have worked wonders because I can refer back to them as I figure out what I want to plant for maximum production in my small space. The next order of business was to pull back the many greenhouses to assess what had germinated and how much space I would need as I thinned out those plants. I planted these collards from starts over a year ago. They lasted through the hot summer and never went to seed, so I just let them keep growing. But if they ever go to seed, I will be harvesting the seeds because they are very hardy. It made sense to plant onions in between them to deter pests while getting a crop of onions for cooking. And the mini greenhouse has done its job of sheltering them as both have thrived. Bush bean will take over the space after harvesting the onions while repairing the soil through the growing season. The cabbages are also growing well, and I will thin them out once more leaves have developed. The same applies to the kohlrabi that are interplanted with the bell peppers, which is usually not recommended because they require different soil acidity. But, I seem to have found a sweet spot because the kohlrabi is growing better than the cabbage. Once they're thinned, I'll add basil and a few onions to help repel pests. And on to the second bed. The strawberries are doing quite well and even producing flowers in January. This is another space for onions that I will start during the middle of February which is near to my last frost date because this section doesn't have a cover. Onions here will help with keeping down the snail population that just loves strawberries. This section with bell peppers, garlic, and kale will pretty much remain the same except for adding a little basil and marigolds. Again, to deter pest. My thinking is the more smells the better to scare off the million and one bugs here in Florida. The side beds that currently have sweet peas I plan to plant corn again around my last frost date. I planted the peas to repair the soil so getting sweet peas was a bonus. I'll sow the corn in while the peas are still producing and will simply cut off the pea stalks once the weather heats up and rotate in beans as a companion plant to the corn. The third side bed will contain cucumbers and beans to replace the sweet peas.
while they're still growing. This way, I keep harvesting while the new plants are growing, with the bush beans helping to beef up the soil, because cucumbers are heavy nitrogen feeders. The beds near the fence will have tomatoes in back with basil and a few bush beans toward the front. And, you guessed it, the beans helping the soil while the basil will help with pest. The third bed will house the blueberry bush because of its acid requirements. I plan to do a separate video on creating the soil for that. And finally for the outside, the trellis beds. I thought the pole beans would die back, but many of their vines are still green despite their brown appearance. So I'll leave them to see what happens and add squash, tomatoes, and basil. I can always come back and add more pole beans if the old ones die off. I can now move on to the seeds I'm starting indoors. Last year, I had a problem with root disturbance when I moved the squash. They didn't like it. So this year, I'm starting them in toilet tissue rolls that I can start inside and simply place in the ground to let the rolls break down around the squash. Making the roll containers was pretty straightforward. Put rocks around the rolls so I could bottom water to keep the seeds moist but not wet. Add moist soil. and then the seeds. In no time, the rolls absorbed the water to keep the soil moist and made these starts plant and leave it. I'm putting them on a windowsill as my light source. But before I go any further, let me update you on the blueberry cuttings. The recommended time was one month, but I let them go for five weeks to really give them time to set. I did about 15 cuttings and two died outright. The test to see if roots have taken hold is to give the cane a slight pull. If there's resistance, then roots have formed. While the majority are still alive, about six of the smaller canes seem to have developed roots faster. If their growth continues, it looks like I'll need to build another bed just for cuttings. Okay, on to more seed starts. I have marigold seeds that grow pretty quickly, but I also wanted zanias, so I'm doing a container for them. I decided to put rocks in the bottom, then moist soil, and then sprinkle the seeds over the top and lightly cover them. Once covered, they too become plant and lead it. I'm using the same principle for the beans, only this time I didn't put rocks in the bottom. They also became plant and leaded. 
I wanted more beans and cucumber starts, but ran out of the rotisserie containers, so I just used some start trays I had on hand. I put all the containers on cookie trays so I could move them around to collect natural light. The zinnias are already sprouting. Let the games begin. See you next time.